Well, welcome, everybody, to another edition of Lewis at Large. Here's truly Warner Lewis from the Flight Deck. And, of course, that means some smart talk radio is in your future. And uh, this segment, uh, an interesting one indeed. We're going to be talking about all things marijuana. You have been hearing much about it. Uh, well, you've heard much about it for decades, but you're hearing a whole lot about it in much different segments now over the last two to three years, and frankly, even longer than that, depending on the part of the country that you're from. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, to a very interesting guy indeed. His name is Greg James. He is the publisher of Marijuana Venture Magazine. Uh, that in and of itself tells you a lot right there. Greg, uh, how are you, my friend? Everything's great. Good. Uh, here's what, uh, let's do this. Let's give our Lewis at Large listeners across Northeast Kansas a little bit of background. Um, prior to being publisher of Marijuana Venture, the Journal of uh, Professional Marijuana Growers and Retailers, what was Greg James doing? I uh, actually, well, I don't know how far back you want to go, but I was uh, a TV guy in the 70s, and I went to the University of Washington. And then after that, I started a uh, software publishing company. The uh, name was Topics Entertainment. And uh, by about 2004, 2005, uh, that company got to about $50 million a year in sales. So it was pretty successful. And uh, I guess since then, you know, as you probably know, um, digital downloading and streaming kind of uh, cut the revenues of that business by quite a bit, but it's still around. Right. So, Marijuana Venture Magazine. Uh, tell us how that. Tell us about the the origins uh, of the magazine, and tell us a little bit uh, of why it's such an intrigue to you. Yeah, well, um, I guess about uh, about a year ago. Let me back up a little bit more, too. So the company, that Topics, did really well, and it enabled me to actually buy a pretty large ranch in eastern Washington, which is uh, a sort of semi-desert part of the state that gets a lot of sun. And after they legalized marijuana in uh, Washington, um, I started to get a whole bunch of calls from long-lost friends right about a year ago who uh, were inquiring about whether or not I would let them grow pot, you know, and lease land over there. And they of course, my response was no, and I wasn't really interested. But um, you know, the more I thought about it, the more calls I got, it, it kind of piqued my interest. And really, that led to me um, doing research. And one of the things I kind of discovered was that really no one had done a business magazine for the you know, legal marijuana world. I mean, there were right. magazines like High Times and Dope and Skunk and you know, Weed World. But they were all, you know, on culture and stoner stuff so um yeah i just i kind of launched marijuana venture about eight months ago as a newsletter and it's just grown really fast so this is in fact if, if this is instead of marijuana venture this is easily be called sorghum or corn venture and we're not having this interview um this is in fact i mean seriously if you look at this it's really a magazine if i if i'm a marijuana farmer if i grow marijuana within this magazine are articles advertising etc editorial content about the the fundamentals so to speak and issues regarding the actual just pure growing correct yeah well you know it's been illegal for so long that um you know this the the people who grow it now or, or well let's just say the people who had grown it till it was legal were all growing indoor mostly growing indoors under artificial lights or if they were growing outdoors, of course, they had to hide it and grow it in trees right. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So now you can, literally in Washington State, for example, you can grow a field of outdoor marijuana in bright sunshine in eastern Washington. And so, you know, it's, I mean, it's leading to changes in the practices and then people who actually need information on, you know, things like nutrients and, and uh uh, you know, farm equipment and all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, it, it's a legitimate, you know, fairly big business that's growing fast. Yeah, indeed. Uh, let's let's speak to that. You said marijuana was legal in Washington, and this sounds it may sound naive, but I'm curious as to what's the definition of legal. And I ask that because, well, you can own, have up to a certain amount, but you can't do this, you can't do that. Tell us about what legal means in Washington. You know, as you probably know, both Colorado and Washington right. um, legalized recreational marijuana. So it's now being, you know, it's licensed. In this state, you have to get a license from the Liquor Control 
board, which, you know, same folks that regulate bars and liquor. Um, you can be either a grower, a processor, or a retailer. You have to have a license for each one. Um, and a, and it basically, you know, there's a background check and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so you can grow pot and you can sell it to a retail store, which will sell to anybody who's over 21. Okay. I mean, you can literally walk into a store in Seattle now and buy marijuana. Right. And can I, and again, I, can I smoke it on the street? Can I walk down Main Street smoking marijuana? Yeah. Um, no. I mean, it, okay. it, I so, guess in a way, it's similar, similar to cigarettes, right? Where the same kind of deal, right? I mean, I, I don't know what it's like where you guys are at, but out here, you, I, th- I don't think you can even smoke a cigarette in a public park. So the same kind of rules apply to marijuana. Right. I mean, they don't want people walking down the street uh, toking. Okay. And now, again, you said you can sell it to a retailer. Can I grow truckloads, tons and tons and tons and tons, and sell it? There's no limit to that. Is that correct? Just like no, there's, no, there's a limit. The, the uh, right now, what the Liquor Control Board is doing is granting um, twenty one thousand square foot um, canopy size, which you know is about half an acre. So if you get a license, you can grow half an acre, but. A half an acre, you can grow about 3,000 pounds of marijuana. I mean, we've done the calculations. It's a lot of pot, so that's a ton and a half. And at current prices, that's probably somewhere between, you know, 4 and $5 million worth on one half acre of, pot, of uh, canopy. I mean, it, the numbers are pretty big. Okay, it begs the question. By the way, if you just joined us, we're talking to Greg James. He's the publisher of Marijuana Venture Magazine, uh, the Journal of Professional Marijuana Growers and Retailers. Uh, I have a copy of it in my hand. If you saw this magazine, this is not, as he referred to, a stoner magazine. This is very much a practical trade publication, again, about any other agricultural product, with marijuana just happening to be one of them. Greg, uh, 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 as I would assume, uh, if the free marketplace has anything to do with this, that the price of marijuana in the states of Colorado and Washington, I would think, would start heading south. You know, the funny thing is, so far they haven't. They're, they've actually gone up, but that, I think that has a, a fair amount to do with taxes. I mean, the state is taxing it at a pretty high rate. So kind of what we've uh, heard is that the black market price is still lower than uh, what it is in retail stores. But, you know, what's interesting is the stores have big lines anyway because um, I think a lot of people just kind of get a kick out of being able to walk into a store and buy pot, you know. Right, right. The tourist. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I'm in my mid-50s, right? And I, I probably would have never guessed this would happen in my lifetime, but right. um, it is. Again, we're, there, there is some, we can't help but talk about the politics of marijuana, and, but there's no question, uh, and maybe you disagree, but would you agree with the statement that the marijuana, the legalization, or at least the decriminalization of it, uh, is a train that is gaining speed? People um, that I've talked to are predicting that both Oregon and Alaska are going to legalize recreational marijuana this fall. So uh, up in this neck of the woods, you'll have three states in a row that all have legal recreational marijuana. And then, you know, there, I think there are currently about 25 states that have medical. So most uh, most of the people that I, I talk to and, you know, the, the sort of people who follow this stuff feel like, you know, it's only a matter of time before all of those states, including California, will legalize recreational marijuana. I mean, to me, it just kind of makes sense, right? It's it's the same as prohibition or, or you know, anything else like that. It's that, you know, they've been fighting this stuff for so long, and it hasn't changed the um, availability, it hasn't changed the price. People keep on doing it. And, you know, the studies have basically shown that it's really no more harmful than, uh, you know, alcohol. So I, I guess at the end of the day, you know, why, why should it be illegal? I, I think they should legalize it and tax it and do what they're doing. Guy, right, question for you. What's your, your magazine, the industry right now, is primarily, uh, call them what you want, but basically they're glorified cottage industries at best. Um, what happens, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, when the American tobacco company, R.J. Reynolds, decides, hey, we're going to get in this game, too? Well, yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, I think for that to happen, of course, the federal government's going to have to completely decriminalize it. But I, no doubt in my mind that will probably happen eventually. I mean, 
you know, after Prohibition ended, you ended up with you know Budweiser and you know a bunch of really big alcohol companies, and I'm sure. And I don't know how long it's going to be, you know, 10 years, 20 years, but I'm yeah. sure there will be big marijuana companies selling pot that, you know, kind of looks like, you know, cigarettes in right. you know, packaging. I mean, you might be able to buy it in Walmart you know, someday. Right. Well, if you look, you know, Greg, if you look even in Marijuana Venture magazine, there's packaging in there. I mean, think about it. It's, it's really a, it's a fascinating watching this industry develop. It really is. You know, it really is moving at lightning speed. Um, it, you know, I mean, you think about it, it's gone from being sold in a baggie on a street corner right. <laughs> just a few years ago in this state in Colorado to, you know, packaging requirements, um, testing requirements, you know, licensing, taxes, and all that kind of stuff. And I, um, I, I, yeah, I'm blown away at how fast it's moving. And, you know, the, the people that are advertising with us, for example, I mean, you know, law firms, insurance companies, you know, farm equipment companies, um, accounting, I probably mentioned accounting, uh, lighting companies, electrical contractors, plumbers, HVAC, and uh, they're all doing gangbuster business right now, setting up, you know, grow rooms and security systems and all that kind of stuff. So, it's, it, you know, it's a multiplier effect. And, um, I, you know, to me, I, you know, again, Warner, I'm not a smoker myself. I don't use this stuff. Um, I did back when I was in college, but um, I'm all for it being legal because I think that uh, once you tax it and get it out of the black market, you're going to see, you know, that $30 billion that went across the border to Mexico every year is suddenly going to stay in America. I'm curious as to, and and again, this may be a little bit outside of your bailiwick, but do you have any figures or any even just casual in, informal conversations with law enforcement as to this has saved them lots of time and money because they don't have to worry about the individual pot grower, or are they even starting to look at it from that angle yet? Well, I, I you know I sense there's people on both sides of that fence. I to somebody another radio interview a couple weeks ago and he kind of brought up that the, the, the people who are lobbying against legalization and you know, it kind of makes sense right the prison guard union people who build prisons law enforcement you know that type of uh, those types of groups but, you know i i know a guy who's a retired um police officer who actually writes for the magazine periodically and he's all for legalization because he's kind of a libertarian. I mean, he feels like, you know, it's just such a waste of, of taxpayer dollars to build all these prisons and put all these people in jail for something that, you know, everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people do. But he once said to me, he goes, you know, 30 years of being in law enforcement, um, I can't tell you how many barroom brawls I broke up where the people were drunk. I can't think of a single time I broke broke up a fight where they were stoned. <laughs> you know, to me, it's like, hey, touche, right? It's a whole different deal. Are there, uh, again, it should be obvious, but I, I have not read the law. What Are there age restrictions on use in Washington? Uh, 21, same as the drinking age. Okay, all right. So you, you have to sign a, um, I mean, you have to show ID. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure, and I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but I believe you're limited to only being able to buy one ounce or less. So you can't walk in and buy like 10 pounds a pot. Right. But uh, you can buy, I think, up to an ounce a day, uh, but definitely 21. And they're, they're going to be very strict about it. I mean, they definitely, you know, they do not want teenagers and uh, underage people uh, walking into stores buying marijuana. So with the, so with as part of the marijuana venture being uh, uh, emblematic, symptomatic of a growing interest in, and certainly the light now being <laughs> the the dark room of marijuana use in that entire industry now being somewhat under the the, the uh, radar or at least open now and above board. Uh, do you think we'll see more things such as uh, again larger companies becoming involved, more and more industries such as as you mentioned, lawyers, doctors, manufacturers, packaging, television advertising, on and on and on and on and on. Are you seeing that out there? Yeah, um, a couple examples. I, know a, I talked to a guy, he advertises with us, he does um, advanced HVAC systems, and they need the HVAC systems in these grow rooms to keep them from either overheating or getting too cold. And they're 
pretty good sized company. They're a Seattle based company. He told me he's booked solid for a year um, just doing uh, big HVAC systems in these uh, big grow rooms. And those, by the way, those systems run about $250,000 to $500,000 each. Um, there are several law firms that are just doing tons of business, advising people and, and um, uh, accountants. I mean, the list kind of goes on and on. Basically, it's anybody that, that you would need to uh, talk to if you're starting up a new business. The insurance guys are doing a lot of business, too, because the state of Washington um, requires a million dollars uh, liability insurance. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you is tell me about, uh, I'm curious as to, you said you can only buy an ounce at a time and there's various restrictions. Who is really overseeing what's going on in the local marijuana retailer locations? I, I, I'm not sure exactly on that. I would guess it's the you know the liquor control board because the you know same folks who uh, regulate bars. But I've heard that they're going to be very strict. You know they're going to be sending people in to make sure that um, IDs are being checked. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, they, they don't want to mess up up here in Washington. They know that the rest of the country is watching this. They know a lot of other states are, are looking at what's going on. And um, they're being really careful. I mean, a lot of the people that we talk to, you know, at the magazine, who have applied for these licenses complain that it's a gigantic hassle. I mean, there are a lot of hoops you have to jump through. I mean, one example is, you know, so there's several things to mention here. The state requires a million dollars liability insurance right off the bat. Another thing that any grow room or, or grower has to have or processor is a full security system that includes video cameras and recording gear and all that. If you're growing um, outdoors, you have to have an eight-foot high security fence around the entire grow operation. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, there's, there, it's not an easy deal, let, let me put it to you that way. And so I think you know, the reason they did that is they didn't want organized crime coming in right. and um, yeah, just jumping right on this. And the other thing is they're not allowing people to sell licenses easily. You, you can buy an LLC, but you can't just transfer a, right. a business license. So, so that kind of keeps it from, you know, like you mentioned earlier, a big company coming in and just buying up all these little guys and suddenly, you know, controlling the market. Is there a is there is there such a thing? You mentioned the alcohol control board or state tobacco firearm, whatever. Is is there yeah. in fact a sort of a marijuana growers slash retailing sort of oversight committee by the government of any kind, or does it fall under all all fall under alcohol? I think, I think right now it's all under the liquor control board, but they do you know and, and you know they're down in Olympia, which is our capital. Um, and they do have their own separate group that have been working on the whole marijuana thing, and they've been, you know, they've been at it for a couple of years now, um, you know, drawing up all the regulations, uh, doing all the background checks, all that kind of stuff. They, they, they want to, for example, your 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 uh, finances. They go and do a complete check to make sure all your finances are clean and that the money's not, you know, from laundered money from drug dealing. Right. So in, in have to be qualified. Uh, it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty stringent process. They're they're being careful, and like I said, a lot of people think it's, a, 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 you know, a sort of a big hassle, and that they're being overly cautious. Right. But I, I kind of think that probably in the long run, it's smart. You know, they're going to. Um, their goal is to have basically mostly legitimate business people doing it, and it seems to me like that's what's happening. So, Greg, do you consider yourself a magazine publisher slash journalist first, marijuana uh, legalization uh, and non-criminalization advocate, or do, what are you? Is there going to be another – is your next inclination to have another piece or another project about marijuana, or do you just like the publishing business? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, my other company, it sort of went where it went, and you just kind of follow the road that makes the most sense, right? Um, we've talked to a couple people about who want to do a TV show on, uh, you know, marijuana production, which sounds kind of interesting. And um, the magazine is, has been growing so fast. Uh, I think I mentioned to you, it started out as a newsletter in March, and it was eight pages, and now uh, the October issue is going to be about 100. Um, so I've had my hands full just keeping you know, keeping track of it, yeah. taking phone calls. But it's, uh, yeah, 
I mean, it's it's fun. You know, I I, I still believe, and I, I think that it's uh, just a great idea to do a magazine that's pure business. I mean, we're not advocates for marijuana use. We are we don't smoke it ourselves. But I feel very strongly that you know, like any other agricultural product, you might as well put out some good information on on best practices. Right. Does uh, as we start to wind down here a little bit uh, again, it is legal as you say in the state of Washington uh, with certain codicils. Um, drinking milk is legal, and you can buy gallons and gallons if you want. Do you see the day when basically this falls under the same restrictions, pretty much as cigarettes are? Meaning you can buy as much as you want. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, it's going to be interesting when Oregon uh, legalizes it. And I think it's like almost a sure bet that they will, because then the, what what becomes kind of an interesting question is whether or not there will be interstate, I guess, uh, if right. that's the right word, um, you know, whether Oregon and Washington, because they share a border, whether they will be allowing marijuana to go back and forth. See, one of the things that has come up is that, um, as I'm sure you know, Oregon is, you know, several hundred miles, well, the, the southern border of Oregon is several hundred miles south of the southern border. Right. Being that much further south, it's that much closer to Humboldt County, California, which most people consider to be, you know, like the ideal outdoor growing conditions. Right. But, see, you know, so so it's kind of interesting because if Oregon really liberalized their laws and said, okay, well, unlike Washington, where we're either limited to half an acre, let's just say we'll let people grow ten acres of pot outdoors, you could see, you know, huge fields in southern Oregon. Where the uh, growing conditions are almost perfect, and they could just start cranking out so much, you know, good quality marijuana down there outdoors that it would just be crazy. I mean, it would instantly, or very quickly anyway, uh, you know, cause the price of pot to probably plummet right. you know, a, a huge amount. So, you know, who knows, right? I mean, it's uh, it's kind of tough to predict, but I do, I, I, I've said this many times, you know, I think I'm sure that one day, and I know if it's you know two or three years from now or you know eight or ten years from now that there'll be 500 acre fields in the imperial valley of california with you know mechanical irrigation and you know sure. uh, hundreds of people tending to the plants and trimming the leaves off and everything else you know it'll be no different than tobacco in virginia or you know some other crop that goes really grows really well somewhere right and undoubtedly things such as marijuana cookbooks etc cetera, etc cetera, coming down the road and i can also see big rail lines and big rail stations freight stations into humboldt county too i'm just it's hilarious to think about <laughs> that whole thing cranking back up well listen uh his name is craig james and he is the publisher uh whether he wanted ultimately to have an organization quite this big or not he does it, the, the work uh, the magazine rather is marijuana venture uh the journal of professional marijuana growers and retailers published out in washington greg james is the publisher greg uh, as we wind down here how can people find out a little bit more about the magazine a little bit more about the work that you guys do we have a uh, website you know marijuanaventure.com obviously everybody does that these days um, and we you know, the magazine's published out of Renton, Washington, which is a suburb of Seattle. And yeah, if anybody's interested, you know, we'd love to talk to them, um, especially people with farm, you know, farm supply companies that want to sell, uh, sell that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, I, I said to my editor the other day, one day we will have John Deere advertising in here. I'm just not sure when. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. See, Bagagi, DuPont, all of them. It's great. It's uh, why not? It's legal. Let's do it. Hey, listen, Greg. Thank you again. So much and uh, best of luck to you okay thanks warner appreciate it you bet we'll be back with more right after this on lewis at large